I don't want to, I don't want to make people mad with this answer. Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to my channel. Today I am going to be talking about controversial opinions. So I asked you guys on Instagram and on my YouTube community tab what your controversial opinions are about veganism, environment, and wildlife. And I kind of want to address some of these topics because I've definitely avoided some of these topics, but I kind of want to delve into what my thoughts are here. Keep in mind as you go through this video, <laughs> um, we're kind of going into like a lot of, you know, controversial areas where there's a lot of strong opinions on both sides. And these are just what my views are. I don't represent all scientists. So just keep that in mind as you're listening to my responses and thinking about what your responses are to some of these controversial opinions. Let's go into some of these opinions that delve into the topic of meat eating, hunting, and veganism, because that seemed to be probably the most uh, controversial opinions that I received when I reached out to you guys. I've been a vegetarian for seven years now, but I believe hunting ungulates is a necessary method of population control until large predators are, are reintroduced and expand their range, and also a good way for meat eaters to reduce their reliance on factory farmed livestock and cattle raised on native wildlife habitat. I live in Arizona where wolves and jaguars have been largely extirpated. I can never say that word. Uh, similarly, I believe feral horses should also be hunted because they are degrading wildlife habitat, have no natural predators and reproduce unsustainably. I get where this person is coming from. And if you are looking at things in a purely environmental sense, eating deer is much less harmful in many cases than eating factory farmed cattle. So I think a lot of these vegan questions that seems to be like there is this black and white, you're either vegan or you're like eating factory farmed meat. If you were just pound for pound replacing cattle with wild caught deer in an area where herbivores are abundant, then yeah, you probably would find there's a way lower like carbon emission associated with that. This person also touched on the fact that we are missing a lot of our large predators and naturally the large predators would be there to hunt those herbivores and to restore that ecosystem balance a lot. So we definitely need to focus on restoring the habitat for those large predators. However, what I think about this personally doesn't necessarily come down to an environmental perspective. It comes from a moral issue for me if you do not need deer meat which you don't to survive I don't think you should take the life of that deer if you don't have to there are plant-based alternatives that will you know be just as nutritious if not more nutritious than that meat option that's not to shame anyone who's a hunter who relies on hunting as like a traditional sustenance eating. And I think there are unique considerations in rural landscapes or like the far north where veggies aren't as plentiful as they are everywhere else. But I think for the vast majority of people, we do not need to take that deer life to survive. So why would you kill an animal if you don't have to? That's how I see it. I see deer and dogs and cats the same way. And that's something that's really hard to explain to a lot of people who aren't vegan. But in my personal view, I don't think there's any difference between shooting your dog and eating it and shooting a deer and eating it. So you could also argue that a dog has less carbon emissions associated with his meat, but it's still immoral to shoot and eat a dog for many of us. So I don't think that the environmental perspective is the only one that I hold. I still think it's not right to take the life of an innocent animal if you don't have to in the same way that why would you shoot your dog and eat it just because it's a more environmentally friendly option than factory farmed meat. Okay, so not a lot of questions I also got were surrounding whaling. Uh, I got some pro whaling comments and I got some anti whaling comments. So let's kind of start with the pro. Privileged city people need to leave native populations that survive off whaling or other marine mammals alone. They don't have the ability to hop in a car, drive five minutes to the nearest McDonald's for a happy meal. This is their livelihood and their culture. It screams ignorant and out of touch with reality when I hear people do this. Okay, let's go to the anti before I give my ideas on this. What will these whaling idiots do once all the whales are gone or made locally extinct because they've all been hunted? Stop thinking Earth was made only for us. Nothing stopping the whalers from getting off their arse, learning a trade and getting another job. This is actually a really good controversial opinion to talk about because 
I think I differ from a lot of animal rights activists on this. I don't think the problem that's facing whales right now is indigenous communities supporting whaling practices. The problem with why whales are going extinct to begin with is because of their lack of prey in many areas where salmon populations and other prey species are declining, loss of habitat, increase of you know cross-country shipping. While an indigenous community might take a whale or two and use every single part of it and harvest it in the way that it's always been harvested since the beginning of time, basically the beginning of humans, there's that on one hand, yeah, maybe some whales will be taken out of the ecosystem. On the other hand, if you are buying stuff off of Amazon and supporting stuff that's being shipped from China and disrupting whale movement and marine mammal movement, if you are buying farmed salmon that is destroying wild salmon populations and killing the southern resident orcas, you are just as complicit in the loss of whales and death of whales and other marine mammals. It's just less like shocking because the impacts of our shopping decisions are not as violent looking as someone killing a whale and then an animal rights activist posting pictures of a bloody whale all over the internet that gets you stirred up but do you really look around at your things and think like this is hurting marine mammals most people don't and so i think that's the real people that we need to demonize is the companies and the governments that are allowing whales to go extinct in many areas and those are people who aren't supporting restoration of habitat i don't think demonizing people who sustenance fish or sustenance hunts these marine mammals is the right path forward. You know, that said, like, will I ever eat whale meat or tell people to eat whale meat? No, no, of course not. Like that's, you know, that's not uh, anything that I'm interested in. That's not something I could like morally live with, but I also live on Vancouver Island and I have access to a garden full of food and I don't come from a culture that traditionally is a whaling culture. So I think that's a totally different situation. Okay, here's, here, here's some, let's, let's get into it on these ones. Okay, sometimes going vegan does more harm than good. For example, mass production of avocados in Mexico due to the increase in their consumption in the US is causing the floors to erode. And that without, the floors to erode, I'm not sure what that means. And that without considering the CO2 emissions caused by shipping. Okay, let's let's talk about this because this is a common misconception. A lot of people kind of point to avocados and they're like, well, look at how much harm vegans are doing because they're supporting, you know, these harmful practices in the avocado uh, production industry. I mean, the first argument I would give towards that is that not vegans aren't the only ones who eat avocados. There are, you know, meat eaters eat avocados too, but meat eaters meat eat meat and avocados. <laughs> While vegans might supplement the animal products with avocados, even if a vegan eats more avocados, you have to look at the CO2 consumption of not only your meat, but what your meat eats. So CO2 consumption wise, you know, you have to grow the plants that your meat eats. So you have to grow this massive amount of soybeans, corn, whatever the feed is for that animal. And you have to take the, into account the CO2 considerations associated with the animal that you're eating. And you have to take into account the CO2 conditions associated with the shipping of that beef or whatever animal product that you're eating. There is less overall emissions associated with most vegan based sources of food. I definitely see the arguments of someone who looks at the vegan who eats the pineapples and the avocados and lives in Wisconsin and everything that they eat is shipped into them. And I don't think that that's ideal. I definitely think eating an exotic produce based diet can be quite harmful for the environment. Exotic produce is so often overlooked like in the vegan world about actually like it could be really good for your body, but if it's not native and it's being shipped in from across the world to get to you, it's not the best choice for the environment. Not to mention like the human rights considerations of who is picking your food. Avocados is a good one, for example. There are major human rights uh, violations associated with the avocado industry. The answer to that isn't, well, okay, we'll give up on veganism because like it's bad for the environment. And I don't think at all you can say veganism is bad for the environment. One of the most environmentally friendly diets, like I would say the most environmentally friendly diet 
is someone who's eating a primarily or completely plant-based diet locally and taking advantage of local produce grown by people that you know and having like backyard gardens and eating that as the main source of your food. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna talk about like the massive amount of privilege associated with being able to even have a backyard <laughs> and a backyard garden. And the fact that a lot of these um, gardening and harvesting practices were actually taken away by a lot of people through residential schools and the loss of like traditional gathering practices. So there is so much environmental justice components wrapped up with whether or not you can actually even get food locally or not and whether it's safe to eat. But if we're talking in a theoretical kind of sense, then a local plant-based diet is appropriate for many people. So on the flip side of that, carnism and environmentalism are incompatible. I don't want to, I don't want to make people mad with this answer. If you look at any other unsustainable lifestyle type of thing, like let's talk about, you know, oil consumption. Do, would you say oil consumption and environmentalism are incompatible? Some people might say yes. Um, huh. I don't see the, the reason why I don't want to say like you can't eat meat and be an environmentalist is that's going to alienate almost the entire world. And then of course there's going to be people with like, well, you know, I eat my backyard chickens, eggs, I eat this, but what about this? But what about like my uncle who has a dairy farm down the street? And so people get so wrapped up on those exceptions rather than looking at the overall practice of how people eat. Um, overall, if you were the person who's like, wait, 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 no, 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 no. I'm not one of those people because I eat meat, you know, from the cow down the street. Is that 100% of the meat you eat? Because, you know, most people say they support local farms, but the vast, vast majority of people are eating factory farm food. And there's a huge disconnect where people like to think that they are, you know, supporting these local farmers, but then they'll go to McDonald's or they'll go like, you know, to the store sometimes and buy factory farmed foods. So like all these my exceptions come down to like indigenous communities and sustenance har harvesting. And so I think there are some exceptions to this rule, but um, in general for the most people, especially the vast majority of Americans, I you know have that opinion that this might be true. Allowing grazing in national forests would promote biodiversity. So we have lost a lot of our natural grazers. In North America, American bison have largely left the landscapes. They're slowly being reintroduced, but due to poor hunting practices and the loss of like sustainable indigenous management techniques, there are no longer a lot of native herbivores that would normally graze these landscapes and they've ultimately been replaced with cattle in many circumstances. So cattle are effectively filling this niche of grazers. And so a lot of these landscapes actually benefit from grazing. Native prairie does better in areas where it is grazed regularly and that's because there originally was these herbivores filling that niche. The problem is that many people look at cattle and are now like, well, no, cattle now have replaced bison, so we're good. Cattle, we need the cattle there. We need to eat that beef to graze and support those landscapes. I don't agree with that comparison. I, I think we need to restore natural herbivores into the landscape, reintroduce bison into many of the landscapes where they have been lost from and other native grazers, rather than taking cattle in and having them graze that land instead where cows were not a natural part of this landscape. The fact though that this controversial opinion just says grazing and not grazing of cattle, I would agree with this one. In landscapes where it is proven that herbivores grazing on the landscapes promote biodiversity, I would definitely support uh, the reintroduction of natural herbivores into those landscapes, but I hesitate to promote cattle being introduced into those landscapes because when you would bring in cattle, what's gonna happen when a predator like a cougar eats some of those cattle? Now the farmers are gonna wanna go after the cougars, kill the large predators because they need to support their herds. Are the farmers really just gonna be like, oh, well, that's just the circle of life or are they gonna fight back and is more cougars gonna be killed? Veganism is not suitable for everyone. Some are better off being flexitarian, pescatarian, vegetarian. Um, yeah, I don't really subscribe to like every single person in the world has to be a vegan. I think you should do, you know, what you feel morally 
ethically comfortable with and what's within your capability, uh, you know, in the place you are in the world and the, you know, amount of money and like mobility you have right now. Um, and I don't think people who are low income in a food desert should feel guilty about not being vegan. Like a lot of people are just trying to survive and that's kind of comes first. If you have the means to be vegan and, you know, it's possible for you, but you just choose not to, I would just look at what you are buying. If you are going to be consuming these animal meats and, you know, milks and eggs, watch the factory farmed footage. Watch those slaughterhouse videos. I really don't think you should live like completely blind to what the food sitting in front of you and where it comes from. You know, you need to know where it's coming from because you're supporting it with your dollar and with your fork. So if you watch all the slaughterhouse videos, you know, look at things and how they get to your plate, you know, the emissions associated with animal products, uh, some of the controversial parts of animal products outside of what like these egg and meat lobbies are telling you and you do, can like honestly look into yourself and say I support this like this is something I feel comfortable with morally I guess like you know do what feels good to you morally but I think once you really start looking at the systems that are in place in a lot of these factory farms is you aren't going to be comfortable supporting that and the problem is we're so blinded to what's happening behind those factories and it's not like your fault necessarily it's like because of ag gag laws that are hiding this undercover footage and because people are like oh no that hurts to look at like i don't like seeing the animals sad but yet you continue to go to the store and buy those products so you are really supporting what's happening to those animals but you know i'm not telling you to do anything that's against your morals just make sure you please have all the information before you choose to uh sit down and eat that steak Okay, so I, I've already gone so long on this video. I have so many more unpopular opinions to do, so I think I'm gonna have to do another video. So I have a bunch about like zoos and conservations. Um, I have a bunch about like nuclear power and chi the child free movement, which I also wanna talk about. So I think I'm gonna have to make another video about that. I'm gonna end with a uh, upbeat one a little bit. So here's a controversial opinion. Costas hummingbirds breeding displays are by far the most underrated of all US birds. Okay, so I don't know, I don't have Costas hummingbirds here. So I'm gonna look up their breeding displays. Oh, it's so pink. <laughs> in close, a little shimmy directly in front of her rocking his entire body back and forth in a display of flying prowess what? though his back shimmers with green but it's not so until cute we get her point of view that we see his true splendor Ooh. it's like a little octopus okay Okay, that's cool. I don't think that's a controversial opinion. So uh, let me know what you guys think below. Please be respectful uh, of a difference in opinions, I suppose. But, you know, feel free to share what your opinion is on some of those controversial topics. If you have more controversial topics that you want me to address, leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.